First of all, my condolences to the families and to the survivors of the Washington Navy attack this morning. And it was obviously a terror attack. I mean, even if it was, quote-unquote, workplace violence, it was workplace violence to the point where it could definitely be classified as terrorism. And even if it's just domestic terrorism. And by the way, if you've been following the news and Google searching and what have you, you'll see that Aaron Alexis, the dead gunman had been in trouble with the law before. And if you look at bustedmugshots.com, if you want to look at his picture, see, I actually have the link on my Facebook page because they had said on one source that he had been in trouble with the law before. And then I'll actually post the link in my video if you want to see it. And then he had been in trouble for because I want to get the specific offense down I don't understand Texas law at all so it says here that he was in trouble for and I'm going to get the link while this is uploading anyway so he'd been in trouble for a firearm offense before it was on September 4th 2010 and he was 31 years old at the time they say he's 34 now so Given that, I'm guessing he was about to turn 35 or had just turned 34 this year. What it says was that he was in trouble for um, PC 42.12B, MA discharge, firearm CE. Not exactly sure what that means in, for lack of a better term, Texas law code. But obviously Aaron Alexis had been in trouble before. And if he wasn't monitored, he definitely should have been more closely monitored. Especially because, unfortunately, as we know, military guys and law enforcement officers and other people who, especially who have had gun offenses, can be more dangerous, especially because they know the workings more with, for lack of a better term, guns and tactics and just whatever you want to call it, so it's it's pretty clear that they should have monitored that they should have monitored this guy. And there's nothing else to say except for the fact that twelve people are murdered and they they are saying twelve by the way. And okay, it says the current headline I'm reading is Texas man ID to shoot a Navy Yard attack, they kill twelve and this is according to foxnews.com, and people are saying, well, he killed all these people. The thing is that killing is way different than murder, and this, this is for any news organization. If they want to be honest, they, I mean, I'm not saying that these news organizations intend to do the things that they're doing, but, like, when they say, oh, people were killed in an attack and wherever, people were this and this and that, not really killed, it's murder, so that distinction needs to be made. If you're talking about people being killed, then people like Aaron Alexis were the ones he can mention were killed. The people who were murdered were obviously murdered, so the people who are reporting the news need to need to really make that distinction and say that, you know what? Like I said, people like Aaron Alexis were killed. People who Aaron Alexis murdered, obviously, were murdered. And that's pretty much what I have to say about that. And again, my condolences to those who watched their family and their friends and just anyone else at the Navy Yard get murdered. And, I mean... I, I gotta say, too, September has been a pretty month, rough month in terms of terror attacks because they were mentioning something, I can't exactly remember what they said happened on September 15th, but something happened, and then obviously we just had the 12th remembrance of September 11th, then this, so I, I gotta say, September has been, in terms of the history of America has just been a pretty tough month. And then, of course, after September, we had the October 24th, 1929 crash of the stock market. And then, obviously, we had 
on September 16, 2008, the crash of the stock market in modern terms. And so, I mean, September has been a very rough month in terms of the history of our country. And there's just been so much. And it's, I, I mean, what else can you say about it? And just there's a lot going on right now. By the way, I promised to make a new video um, like yesterday. I try not to use them, but there I go, unfortunately. And by the way, sorry, I'm getting distracted because I'm looking at a couple of things on Google right now and stuff. And one of the things that I'm looking at right now is this kind of, I guess, kind of hilarious, maybe interesting picture of... Because I'm doing genealogy research, and I had a relative contact me this morning. So, speaking of genealogy research, I have found out that my mom is Jewish. Not that she really cares, unfortunately, but she is. And it's surprising because on my mom's side, the Mueller's and the, the Seidenbergs as well, but the Mueller's definitely became Jewish quite early on. And if you trace back to how early on they became Jewish on the Mueller side, it pretty much, let's see, Mueller, the trail pretty much for lack of a better term stops with, it's amazing because it pretty much stops with um his name, I kid you not, so forgive me for this, and of course the name was used before the, for lack of a better term, the horror that happened in the 1930s and 40s, the the relative who we pretty much can trace back to on the Mueller side, and there are other relatives you can trace back to, but one particular relative, and like I said, the name was used before the horrors in 1930s, the 1930s and 1940s happened. Well, we can we can also trace back to his dad, but the baptism records were found for neither one of them, and the baptism records can be found for as far back as 1558. I believe that's the correct date. Let me check that, because I have it right in front of me. And I am getting better in terms of having things right in front of me when I'm talking about this stuff. So it says, okay, I did. Well, the, um, okay, I had a marriage record, not a, darn it. Not a baptism record, and but if I if I want to do like baptism records, I can click on his son because I was able to find a baptism record for his son. So the baptism records can be found as far back as while well, floating here. Okay, the baptism records can also be found for 1558, and so. They must have become a new theme during the 100 Years War, by the way. The records weren't found for the dad and son, like I said. But the, the, the son who I was mentioning, and then of course I mentioned the grandson, because the grandson had a baptism record. But the son's name was, and like I said, this is where I'm warning you, because, you know, like I said, the name was used before the 1930s and the 1940s. But I know that a lot of people would understandably get offended. The name that he used, and it's likely that he probably adopted this when he converted, the name that he used was, like I said, so I'm just preparing you here. The name was Adolf Daniel Solomon Mueller. And then his dad was Joseph Solomon Mueller. And then you could trace it back. As far as his wife, you could trace it back to, let's see, you could trace it back to, oy vey, you could trace it back to like 1644, you could trace it back to her, let's see here, not always exactly good at calculating these things. So you could trace it back to her granddad in 1644. Of course, we know that the war, the Hundred Years' War, ended in 1648. We know that with the, the so-called Reformation in 1517, anti-Semitism had really gotten ramped up 
And then, of course, the Hundred Years' War, and that definitely added more to the anti-Semitism, because, of course, you had the, the Vaticanists and the Lutherans fighting each other, and you had other people fighting each other, too, but all, unfortunately, considered the Jewish people their enemies, and, of course, there have been periods throughout history where Jewish people became a new scene, and... So, and, and as far, you know, it's the same side, by the way, that we can trace the Jewishness through. And I, I also count the, let's see, so we're talking about Mom's Jewish Heritage here in the Pun side and the Seidenberg Mueller side. We can also count the Lairs. Again, no baptism record was found for Dora Lair Punt, and she was born on April 2nd, 1846. No baptism record found. Again, you get by the baptism records back to 1558. And her parents were a Gunther and a Lair. I've not been able to really find anything on them. And I use family search and ancestry and nothing's really come up. And so it's just, it's just amazing how, first of all, I found out that mom's not just of a Jewish descent, but she is actually Jewish and Sure, I mean, for lack of a better term, there's Gentile admixture in there, but there you go. I can legitimately, for lack of a better term, establish myself as Jewish, as a Batanusi, and, well, that's that. And it's like, the more that I find out, the more that it's like, wow, oh, that was interesting. I came upon a census record for someone. I was just, oh, there we go. Okay. I was just browsing through the census records and stuff just to see if I could find anything. And there was this one guy named Israel Lair. Um, probably no relation since he was in Pennsylvania. And let's see. Since he was in Pennsylvania and oy vey. Um, some, sometimes my EDD really gets to me. And... Well, there you go. I think I, I made a point enough about being Jewish and how I can actually establish it through both parents. And I think by now I'm definitely boring some people. There were other updates I was going to make, so I guess I'll stop here and then do like a part two. And well, like I said, I think I pretty much bored people by now, so well, there you go.